Oh yeah, it's bell ringer time. Every day, baby. Mr. Comeback's Class. It's Mr. Comeback's Class. You might learn on time. It's Mr. Comeback's Class. He's interested too. It's Mr. Comeback's Class. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Comeback's Class. Um, we know that the front part of the brain is really what makes us kind of unique. The frontal lobe. But the occipital lobe is very important too. Remind me, what does the occipital lobe do again? Hmm? Yeah, you got it. And of course, yesterday I talked a little bit about the act of, of drugs, especially opiates. Different drugs work on different parts of the brain. And so, like usually if you have like a lot of anxiety or whatever, we're working on your frontal part of your brain, right? Those kinds of things. Um, if you're having tremors, we work on the mid, this uh, part of the brain. So that's kind of how it works. And of course, opiates work mostly on the brain stem. Remind me, what is the role of the brain stem? And of course, to me, um, the most interesting part of the brain stem is the amygdala, amygdala. And the amygdala is uh, where you experience emotions. Now, one of the things that we know about development in childhood is um, the amygdala has to connect to the, to the cerebral cortex and that takes time to build those connections. So the younger you are, the more likely you are to act emotionally. And as you age and get experience, you're able to make connections between your processing centers of your brain and your amygdala and you will experience emotions, but you're able to uh, act more rationally. So that's my question for you. My last question. Do you think you still are, how much do you think the amygdala still has control over your life? I will say, after knowing you and some of you in seventh grade and some of you in now in ninth grade and 10th grade, your amygdala, you've got things much more under control. That's the biggest difference between middle school and high school. All right, let's get to work. <laughs>